What's up guys? I've been riding the Yeti SB130 lunch ride for the last week. I used to own this bike, loved this bike. Uh, I only sold it because due to the nature of the YouTube channel, I'm, I'm always going through different bikes. For, for me to get a lot of time on a bike, I gotta buy it, hang on to it for five or six months, and then on to the next one. I was so sad to see this one go, and I'm really excited to be bringing this long-term review for you. Talk about uh, all the things I love about this bike, kind of some of the things that are difficult about this bike that you might not know until after you owned it for a while. Um, this bike has been out for three seasons now. Well, the original one, the Yeti SB130 has been out for three seasons. It's been here for a while. The lunch ride's been here for two full seasons and it's crazy. Bikes being built today and brought to, to retail today have the same geometry that this bike has when it came out almost three years ago. It's just, it speaks to how good Yeti is and how innovative they are and just ahead of the market they are on some things, especially with geometry. So on a lunch ride edition, it's 65 degree head tube angle, 76 and a half degree seat tube angle. Uh, if you get the regular 130, um, it's a 65 and a half degree head tube angle and a 77 degree head tube angle. It's as simple as taking a little seven millimeter clip off the back shock here. So you pop the can open, clip the little black clip off. That makes it a lunch ride. Goes from 130 up to 137 in the rear. Throw a 160 fork. I've got a Fox 36 grip two damper on here. Mm, love that fork, so good. One of the things I love about this bike is the harder you push on this bike, the more, the more you just give it the beans, the better it gets. It just starts to open up and just become this incredible machine. I just, I love it. Um, Anyone who's ridden this bike can attest to how just how precise and how fast this bike is. It's just really a lot of fun to really go really hard on this bike. Um, and that's actually a great segue into today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by Carbo Rocket 333 Endurance Fuel for dudes like you and me who want to go out and ride. So it kind of fits two categories, really. The dudes out there who race, that used to be me and I don't race anymore. And then dudes who just don't want to bonk on the trail. We've all been there get on the trail, get started and feeling sick and your buddies are starting to leave you in the dust and you just didn't fuel properly, you didn't eat properly, you didn't have enough breakfast or enough food out on the trail, you went a little too far. Or you have the, the guy in your group who's always consistently just bonking, just doesn't have enough carbohydrates in his body to keep him moving. So if you're like me, you don't race anymore. I mean, the, uh, race fuel, I mean, putting Carbo Rocket in your bottle is amazing. You add three scoops right into your bottle it's super easy to drink. So in a race situation, you don't have to be out there trying to unwrap a candy bar or some goo or something and trying to squeeze it down your throat. So in a race situation, Carbo Rocket makes a ton of sense. Put it in your bottle. But guys like me now who just go on rides, anytime I go on a ride longer than an hour and a half, I put Carbo Rocket in my, in my bottle here. I don't always do the full three scoops for an hour and a half ride, but I at least do two scoops. And it gives you 300 calories in your bottle that's easy to drink. You don't ever bonk. You don't ever feel sick. You don't feel like you're working too hard. You can just have the uh, right amount of fuel in your body to, to fuel your workout. It's incredible. I don't know how people go out and do this stuff without it. It's in every, you know, guys who ride motocross do it. Guys who run marathons do it. Obviously, enduro racers and cross-country racers on, on bikes do it. Cobble Rocket, I've been using this stuff for, geez, like seven, eight years now, and they just started sponsoring the channel in the last couple months, about a year ago, actually, is when we first did our first video with them. But it, if you've never tried Carbo Rocket, now is your opportunity. Use my promo code YUM YUM at checkout for 25% off. There's a link in the description down below. Okay, I'm so stoked that they're offering that to our viewers. Now let's get into the long-term review of the Yeti SB130 Lunch Ride, the bike that demands everything from you. So this is why the 130 and 130 lunch ride are so fun. Because you can ride the chunkier stuff, higher speed stuff up on that Jacob Flatter bit. And then you come down here on like a buffed flow trail and you don't have this vague, boring bike. You've got a really precise, like pretty nimble bike. It's just, I mean, this bike kind of does it all better than most. Very impressed. Do you want to find out what this bike has to offer, what makes it different than the Pivot Switchblade, than the Ibis Ritmo from the Specialized Stump Jumper? Uh, 
you got to just ride it hard. You got to get your elbows up. You got to get your chin over the bars. You got to ride it like you mean it. And uh, that's the type of person who buys this bike. So there were some days when I owned this bike for six months, there were some days where I'd ride it and it'd feel a little demanding. Like I wasn't getting through the corners. It would just, it would oversteer through the corners a little bit. And uh, it just, it, it was a lot of work sometimes. And that's the downside of the Yeti, in my opinion. It has that long front end. So I'm five foot eight riding a size medium bike and the reach on this bike is 455. For a bike that came out three years ago, that's very uh, aggressive geometry. I mean, even bikes today, I just rode the Stump Jumper. It doesn't have a 455 millimeter reach with a 77 degree or 76 and a half degree seat tube. So it, it, it really needs you to be in that aggressive, let's go, you know, you mean business type of, type of riding position, right? And if you do, man, every turn, every corner, every turn will feel pro most likely feel better than any other bike you've been riding. It's got a pretty long wheelbase for a size medium that came out that long ago. Bikes are pro progressively getting more and more like enduro-fied or enduroed. And eh, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, but on a bike like this, this is a, a quintessential trail bike. 137 in the rear, 160 millimeters up front, and it climbs awesome. It has tons of traction in the corners, but you gotta ride it like you mean it. Climbing real quick. You can just spin this thing all day long. It is among the, the most efficient pedaling bikes I've ever ridden. Never have to mess with the lockout. Um, you, you know, I even ride about a mile and a half on the, on the pavement before I get to the, the dirt. And I don't lock it out even in those situations. It's just, it's such an efficient, that switch affinity. If you're not familiar with Yeti, I would imagine you are at this point, but if you're not, they use a suspension style called Switch Infinity, and it's this incredibly supportive suspension platform that you can really stand on and mash the pedals. So climbing situations, it's awesome. It's only second to the pivot switchblade in this category in climbing technical terrain. Just pedal along, I would say this is just as efficient, if not more, than the, the pivot switchblade. In technical terrain, I think that switchblade probably finds a little bit more traction than the Yeti SB130 or Lunch Ride. Um, but man, for, for a guy that's gonna own one bike, this has got to be on your radar. It's just so efficient, so good climbing. Turn it downhill, holds the line so well. It's incredibly stable. You'll see in the footage I'm gonna drop in right here, just how stable this bike is at high speed on this this section of video is 30 miles per hour and um you know kind of eight inch to foot and a half um of chundry rocky sections um you can see kevin riding in front of us here he's just pinning it you know and uh you know it's just nice to be on a bike that's as stable as this and still climbs well it's just a very well-rounded do everything bike um one of the nice things is, is, is when you get this bike down into the tighter sections of the trail, the, the, the type of blue trails that a lot of us uh, ride, just because we have more access to those, right? Those blue trails, those kind of flowy buff trails, this bike is just on rails. There's so much support. It's such a stiff platform to push into. And uh, like I said, get that chin out, up over the bars and you're just gonna hammer the corners. It's unbelievable. Long-term ownership of the bike, no funny cable rattles, no rattling around anywhere. Just quiet bike, easy to, easy to maintain and own. It's beautiful bike. I've always maintained Yeti makes the most beautiful bikes. I just think they're incredible. Um, I, just, I just love them. Yeah, they're incredible. Um, I think for the, for the type of person who buys this bike is a guy who really likes to get out and smash some big miles and needs a bike that he can go do 30 miles on but still want something that can handle bike park days. You know, that's a, that's a tough task, a, a kind of cross country type task in, in longer rides and climbing ability, but then go smash some aggressive downhill sections of trail, even at a bike park. I have, I have taken this exact bike to our local bike park at Deer Valley and ridden the wheels off this thing, hitting all the big jumps, doing everything. It jumps well, it, it, it's incredible. In terms of playfulness, I'll just mention that too. Maybe not quite as playful as like the evil uh, uh, offering or um, like the, the most current, the newest specialized stump jumper. Those are really fun, playful bikes. It doesn't feel as deep in the suspension as like the Santa Cruz High Tower, um, you know, but it's a very precise bike. It's, it's really a, a lively, sporty, precise bike. That's just a lot of fun. 
I could totally have this be my only bike and I'd be totally satisfied with it. Uh, it was, I mean, it wasn't my only bike, but it was my bike this earlier this year and I loved it, just loved it. Um, I picked up this bike from Salt Cycles here in Sandy, Utah. They have Yeti SB130s and 130 lunch rides in stock right now. It's November, 2021, 2021, how do you say that? It's November, 2021. Salt Cycles has these in stock in every size, uh, in multiple different colors. They got new colors for this year too. Um, and uh, give Chris a call. He's happy to customize it for you, put whatever wheels or tires you need on there, make it more cross country oriented, make it more enduro if that's what you want, swap out bars, whatever you need. They're incredible. Salt Cycles are the guy to work with. Call Chris, his number's listed below. Uh, they support my channel and support me and uh, they build beautiful bikes. So. Give them a call, they've got them in stock now. Um, geez, that about wraps up this video. Long term, I would say buying a Yeti would be super happy. I can think of a bunch of my friends, you know, Kevin who, who rode with us today, he's been on it this whole year. He came from the Yeti SB150. Um, my buddy Jason Anderson, he's on a 130 lunch ride, um, just hammers that bike. He goes out and does 35 mile rides and big rides and smashes the pedals. Um, yeah, Jason Anderson's the type of guy who, you know, he did buy this bike. That's the type of guy. He does a lot of cross country stuff, but he still likes to go ride rowdy trails, you know, maybe once a month or twice a month. Um, this bike kind of does it all. I know, I know there's not a perfect like unicorn bike out there, but this might be as close as you're going to get to that. I really think so. Anyway, thanks for watching today, guys. Uh, I, I just want to mention to you, thanks for all of you who subscribe. Over 75% of the people who watch my channel have never subscribed to it. It's crazy. So click the subscribe button. I'm not going to uh, blow a ton of videos your way and blow up your whole YouTube channel. Uh, you know, I do a video about every two weeks. I usually do bike reviews. So subscribe, stick around, hit the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you have comments or questions, put it in the section down below and we'll talk about it. And thanks again to Carbo Rocket for sponsoring this video. I couldn't keep doing videos like this without uh, those, those little ads that I'm able to put in here. And Carbo Rocket's kind enough to, to support the channel and, and sponsor this video. So go get 25% off your next bottle of uh, Carbo Rocket. I don't know how you ride without some sort of fuel. Fuel smarter, go further, Carbo Rocket. That's their slogan, baby. <laughs> uh, fuel smarter go far oh dude this bike is so good so kev you've been on a 130 lunch ride this whole season right yeah yeah i came from the 150 yep didn't didn't come from it because i didn't like it i just figured i'd try something new and first impressions were couldn't tell a whole lot of difference between the 150 and the 130 at first at first other than this bike just seemed to ride smoother. Didn't feel quite as long, uh, but the main things were this bike wants to be ridden fast. Or the harder, the harder I go, the better it gets. The longer I've owned it, the more I like it. Yeah. And uh, some turning characteristics that I notice is on the long sweeping turns, you just have so much grip and confidence. You can lay those turns out, not the quick little ones, but these long ones where you're always kind of on the edge, trying yeah. not to look on the side of the trail. <laughs> yeah. It just gets into that rut and just rides through fast and, and just feels like you're on rails. Well, when I'm following you, you can tell how much confidence you have in the, in the stability or in the uh, traction just because you're pumping in almost every corner just full on. Yeah, and I wouldn't say, you know, I'm six foot. Uh, this, I'm on a large. Yeah. I've ridden mediums and other brands. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't feel long to me. It doesn't feel big. Uh, I mean, if you're used to a 29er, I wouldn't say this is like a long, big feeling bike. It feels yeah. fast and good. Um, and a point you brought up earlier is it wants to be ridden. Elbows up, over the front. Yeah, chin over the bars type of thing. Yep, keep that chin over the bars and you're gonna feel all the grip you want in the front. Yeah, well, I think I speak for all the people watching this video. It's fun watching you. Oh, it's, it's fun <laughs> to follow you. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> all right, let's get the rest of this trail. Nice.
Dang it, messed that one up. <laughs> nice, dude. Did you almost lose that front end? Did you almost lose your front end in that berm? Just slide a little, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 